Hello and welcome to the new podcast, uh, uh, the Purpose Podcast with Guillaume McMartin and Trish Taylor in the background. Hello, hello, awesome people. We just launched our book, Say Yes, Surrender to Your Purpose, and now we want to help everyone around the world to be able to find their purpose. So let's get started. We have some awesome stuff to talk to you, uh, to talk about today, and you are welcome to join this movement where we help people find their purpose. So first of all, here's the story on how I found my purpose and um, all the search I have made to find it and how I came to find it. So this is important because it's going to uh, show you that you don't have to go blind. Uh, we've been in this path before, Trish and I, uh, really, really looking deep to find our purpose. We're unhappy in the, the place that we were at in life. And, um, well, it's really quite an, uh, a, an exciting uh, adventure on how we got to find each other and how we got to find our purpose together and be at the place that we are today and write a book about it. So, for me, I, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do since I was a kid. I was being different, I was being bullied a lot because I was a junior, uh, because I, I was uh, a bit too joyful, playful, asked too many questions, was too curious in school, and um, well, I, I, I was different, and it's not until later when I realized that different is beautiful, and everyone is different, that I realized that I could. Uh, I had a very high tolerance to risk, did, always did a lot of extreme sports and uh, quite, quite enjoyed it actually and then I found a job where I could help people and where I could work physically, mentally and um, uh, quite creatively to, to solve problems like, like life-threatening situations where we had to act, uh, worked uh, with the team to um, save people, save their, save their homes, their animals, and really uh, create and, and, and help people in a really tough situation. So for me, that was good. And I did eight years as a firefighter in my hometown near Ottawa and quite enjoyed it. But at the station, I was... I was bullied a lot uh, because I was different, I was curious, I was asking too many questions. Um, I did not uh, uh, sit down with the guys to watch the hockey game and talk about hockey all the time. I was more into reading books, uh, doing self-improvement, training all the time. Uh, quite over-training actually at some point. And um, anyway, so so... I was uh, I was having a rough time at the station, um, being different than the other guys, and uh, to 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 a point where, uh, after eight years, uh, being bullied almost every day, uh, and then I was starting to make mistakes on the fire scenes uh, because I was stressed and I was uh, I was um, uh, depressed and could not sleep anymore. Um, because of the, the depression where I really came to a point where I had to choose I either I was going to give up on my life or I was going to completely change my life and have the life that I desired and luckily uh, I saw uh, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel and I decided to change my life I took a year off from firefighting and I joined law school. Um, I thought I, I was already doing a um, 
the, the program part-time in the evenings uh, for the year before and I quite enjoyed it. So I took a year off, go to law school full-time uh, and then started that. Uh, but I quickly realized that law, uh, law school was not for me. Um, it, it got me, it, it was not uh, letting me be as creative as I wanted and um, I felt I was too much trapped in the box and uh, the, the competing students. Uh, um, so I, I decided I, I, I needed something else and this is when I took some business classes. I had a chance to have a, uh, a teacher from business school come to the law school uh, at university and teach us about uh, e-commerce and how to start a business there, which I did. Uh, I started a business with e-commerce, um, a cat store online to sell <laughs> contents to uh, lovers of cats, which, uh, which was fun and I thought it was good niche, except the only problem was I didn't like cats. <laughs> so I... I um, I didn't enjoy it at uh, too much to manage that business, and but with the, law, the 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 classes I took in business, business ideation and creation, really realized that this was for me. Um, being a dreamer and being like a creative person, where uh, now my my complete task was to find solutions to problems and 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 solve them. Um, which I had quite enjoyed doing when I was uh, doing fire investigations at the station. Um, I know I'm good at that, uh, being like a detective or uh, finding solutions. So a friend of mine at that time invited me. He was consulting for uh, indigenous groups in Manitoba, BC, in, uh, in Canada, uh, where he invited me for a week. He was... Um, showing projects to investors from around the world and told me like, well, you're, you're good at like um, uh, looking at businesses and finding ways to improve it and all. So I'd like you to join uh, so that you can, you can relate with the investors and we can show them the projects and all that good stuff. So I said, yes, I want to do it. Um, last minute, well, what happened is that every investor canceled last minute and then I was the only one to go uh, so I, I, I played both the role of investor which I had um, a fair amount of money that I had saved and done from from investing in the stock market uh, myself and um, wanted to look at the projects so in one week in seven days um, literally changed my life uh, I met so many people so many uh, Awesome, uh, the, the chiefs I met on reserve, the people I met uh, from the city of Winnipeg as well, and really decided to, to go all in, in business, uh, to run the projects myself, um, which like the only experience I had was from investing in real estate a bit uh, myself and, and starting an e-commerce. But I had read a lot of books and I had like watched a lot of YouTube on how to do it. So I decided to go all in, uh, start those businesses. In seven days, I created six uh, business models for massive businesses that could be done uh, by the indigenous groups on the reserves and decided to go with that uh, with the help of, the, of the, my, my, my consultants. And uh, I had a lot of fun uh, over working on a few months on the projects with subcontractors working for me, the consultants, and the, the, the help of the partnerships we were creating on reserve and brought people together for the commercialization of medical marijuana with dispensaries on reserve and, um, and with people I met from uh, during a dinner that were from uh, the Pentington Indian Band in BC, in the Okanagan Valley. We went there to uh, work on growing hemp on reserve on the family's land. And uh, turned out that like after working on the plant for a few weeks, uh, we were approached by a medical marijuana company that wanted to grow it there, which uh, seemed like it would be uh, much greater returns per square uh, per acre. 
so so the, the the family decided to go full in the medical marijuana project um, but at that point I, I I was I was taking on too much myself and with the group of people I was working with I put everything on my shoulders instead of like just coaching uh, the people from the reserve to to run the projects I uh, I, I had put the businesses on my shoulders. Um, my shares, uh, my the, the the publicly traded company I had invested in, like the shares were going like minus forty percent, minus sixty percent. I was uh, running out of money, and uh, let's say when I helped ask for help from my entourage, from people back home. Um, I, I I got the feeling that I was being told I was a failure. I was, I, I was a dreamer. I was like just thinking way over my head, and it got me to lose confidence in myself and lost uh, lost the leadership of the projects. So I came back home, uh, like start started like running businesses myself, like just starting back again. Um, investing in real estate, bought a few properties, then I found partners that I could join with and um, uh, for a real estate company, flipping homes, I was partnering with a general contractor and another investor, which we were building, like, uh, making a lot of offers on, on, on bank-owned properties, uh, making, like, offers right and left, visiting the places, uh, raising money so that we could we could buy the properties with none of our money down and uh, but after like a few months making so many offers and nothing was closing and um, we were like all running low on funds uh, ourselves and uh, my, my partners got into a financial tight situation where like I, I just decided to Put an end to this uh, this partnership uh, because I was I, I, I was seeing like what uh, some of the mistakes I had made before and didn't want to repeat them. Sure. Uh, then the uh, the year off I'd taken from firefighting ended, uh, so I had to go back to the station and let's say the last the first two months when I got back. Uh, I, I was proud of what I had done during those, those that year off. I wanted to talk about it, and I was told like we're we're not interested. So just you know, do your thing. Um, and the bullying got back so heavy. Um, I, I I was getting back in into a depression uh, only after two months from coming back, and I decided like no nah, no nah, that's just not the right place. I talked to human resources, but they didn't help me um, much, and I, I, I decided I was time to quit. So uh, I quit my job and went full on into um, running my business. Um, I was super excited by big, big real estate development projects. This is what I, I, I was interested in and uh, continued making many offers, uh, worked on a huge uh, development of um, office towers in Ottawa and uh, after a few months working on that uh, we realized that the, the seller of the land had not completely told everything that was um, going on and at the same time I was uh, let's say being mentored or coached by people that had their own best interests in mind and none of mine. So I was uh, attracted by pride and greed and this is when I um, I got in, into like a bad financial situation and uh, let's say led, led by people that, that were not um, helping me too much. So I, um, I'm glad I got rid of that. Uh, invested then, in, in, uh, I I had invested in two, uh, two companies, two marketing companies, like franchises. Bought fran two franchises, 
and like they really did not have my best interest in mind so I um, I moved on uh, built my business helping uh, startups raise capital start an impact investing realizing that my investments could make a large difference in the world I invest in solar panel company and and that was it like like all the the mistakes I made brought me to a day where I was um, I didn't know where I was going I uh, I, I was kind of uh, uh, failing at the few projects I was running and then one day I going to a networking event I uh, was invited to another online networking event and I met someone that was doing a huge real estate development project and I got immediately interested and we talked uh, on the phone and she introduced me to their lead developer and this is really like the, 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 the first opportunity I had to make something massive and to make a big impact in the world myself. So everything that, that brought me there, uh, failing on the, the real estate development projects I was doing, uh, brought me to an event, like a series of, of, of events brought me to a like motivational events where somebody to thank me for, for my help gave me tickets for that. And this is the event uh, that one year ago, like, well, one year and like three days ago, was the event that literally changed my life. It was called Turning Point, a like hypnosis and uh, inspirational event. And this is where, uh, after I just had to eat a torch of fire to go past my fear, I was running through the crowd giving high fives and saying, you're a fire eater. Um, I was directing to the stage to give high fives to the people coming down the stairs. And the lady of my dream came down the steps. Uh, we gave like a double high five and looked at each other and like literally froze in time for exactly six seconds looking at each other's eyes. And and then we just walked away. <laughs> so uh, and it's on the next day that we started chatting more. We were both running for for coffee before the event started on the next day, uh, right next to each other. When we looked at each other and like started talking, and grabbed a cup of coffee together, and during lunch we 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 went outside. Uh, and chatted for the for the whole uh, during lunch with a few people in the patio and Trish's daughter and like we, we literally fell in love during that weekend and that's it that, that's that's the first part like on how I got there and and found like the love of my dream the, the love of my life at this event and this is literally where we started creating a business around helping people around our purpose after like many discussions and it even took us like one more year to to like f look for for like our strengths our passion our our like purpose on uh, on how we can serve others and brought us to the writing of this book say yes surrender to your purpose a year later and this is what we're going to tell you um, our journey exactly the path that we took to find our purpose and the steps that you as well can take if you've ever been confused and like if ever felt loved uh, ever felt that you were lost in life um, those are exactly the steps that we're going to talk about uh, to guide you to find your purpose and know and be passionate about exactly what you want to do to help others and this we can guarantee is going to attract health, wealth, love and happiness in your life and bring peace around you and give you a peaceful, loving life where you know that you, the service that you give to others is, is extremely well appreciated 
you will be proud of what you do people will be uh, excited to work with you and they will be excited to to pay you the, the, the amount that you are worth and you will enjoy every day wake up every morning knowing that you have contributed to the betterment of the planet of the betterment of the lives of people around you and knowing that you are doing exactly what you are meant to do so stay tuned um, in the next episode you will hear Trish's story and then we will talk about exactly the, the, the path and the journey that we had uh, over one year that we've been together to know exactly today how we can help people like you um, find your purpose and really live the life that you have dreamt about all your life so thank you so much for joining us um, we'll be doing another recording very soon it'll be posted online and know that we are here to help you find your purpose and we are here to support you on your journey um that can be rough at some times and but at this it's an extremely enjoyable journey of finding your purpose and finding exactly what you have been put in this world to do and we're going to unlock the gift that you have been given um when you were born and that you can develop this gift to serve others and enjoy the life to the fullest and attract health, wealth, love and happiness to everything that you touch and attract it into your life. So you are awesome. We are pleased to be spending this moment with you and uh, stay, uh, stay, uh, well, we'll stay in touch for the next podcast and to find and define what your purpose is. So thank you so much. You're awesome. And we'll speak soon.